Hey, how are you doing? Bob Books here for the Gilly Glue. Just out in the backyard, we're going to fill some feeders. We're just here in the Ottawa River. Fall is in the air, as everyone can tell. Uh, it's a great time of year. We just released last week a little video and a discussion about the finch forecast, the winter finch forecast for this year. So this week we thought we'd talk about uh, the actual species that we we're uh, kind of anticipating the, to be visiting. Uh, this year. So there's the uh, common red pole, the hairy red pole, the pine siskin, pine grosbeak, evening grosbeak, all kinds of those birds that are going to move from the boreal forest down. As you can hear, Chickadee's a little distressed because I'm beside his feeder here. <laughs> anyway, so some of the things that we wanted to talk about was the characteristic difference between the common red pole and the hairy hoare red pole. Two different species. Uh, there's some discussion and things. Uh, I've read different stuff different times and studied different stuff about uh, some subspecies of uh, red poles, up to five and stuff, but I haven't really seen a great deal of evidence about that, so it's something I might have to check into. But um, the really I love this guy. So here, here we go. This is the, the common red pole. Beautiful little bird. Uh, some very distinct things that we can talk about, but notice how bright uh, yellow his beak is and of course uh, this is the male and of course the uh, the the red wash of his uh, breast and the r red cap that he has on top of his head so that's some of the very distinct features but we're going to take a look at a, a couple other things that are going to be very uh, distinctive here and I have one shot here yeah so this is it upside he's upside down uh, but you can tell here, see the streaking on the undertail? So often when, we, when we're talking about birds and, and what have you anyway, we're always looking up to see what's what, uh, to see them. And particularly like say with warblers and things, it's a beautiful way to really define uh, what species it is by the underside streaking of his tail. So that's very, very common with the, the um, the common red pole for it for that to be uh, very distinctive. The other thing is that we have here is very distinct streaking on his breast and on his sides. Uh, completely different than the hoare red pole from that perspective. Uh, the beak, the streaking, and the underside tail is a very significant difference when you're looking at these two birds. If you see them side by side, as, as it often is the case with a lot of things, you really say well they're very obviously very different but when you get the individuals in your yard or at your feeders and things you'll see one and you'll think now which one is that so a couple of these things are, are great indicators as to how you can kind of do that now often we'll have um, you know 20, 30, 40, 50, upwards to 100 of these birds coming. I mean, I have pictures here in the yard from uh, three or four years ago of 100, 150 of them on the ground at, at the same time. So it's a, it's a real uh, way to, to be able to distinguish the difference. So here's a, here's a good shot of the Hore red pole. And you can see that the streaking on the breast is very minimal. There's no big bright red wash that's on his breast. He does have the red cap. But look at the beak, it's not quite as pinky pinky yellow as, as, the, uh, as the common red pole was. You can see that there's a distinct difference there. And that will help you determine their difference. The other thing that I really kind of wanted to, to talk about, particularly with, uh, go back to the common red pole, and the reason that this is is uh, sort of so significant with them uh, coming down in the in the uh, from the boreal forest is their uh, their range. And I'll just show you here. So see across the top of the map here. That's their breeding range up in the Arctic. So that's where they they go in the to in the spring and and what have you to have their young. Then the, the bottom area is sort of a year-round thing, and then the blue area is where they frequent commonly based on the change of food source. So you can see that this lighter blue area there is an uncommon area, so that they come periodically but not as common. And you can see where we are over here by the Great Lakes, 
in the St. Lawrence River way over here. So uh, the, we're in the sort of unfringe of the uncommon area, but dependent upon season. So it's a fairly significant change. They do drip down into the U.S. sometimes, depending again on the significance of the cone crop and or lack of it, and how far they will come down. And the uh, hoary red pole is about the same. The pine siskin, uh, pine grosbeak, evening grosbeak those uh, birds and we'll often see uh, you know we'll get into the sparrows and stuff as well so we see white throated sparrow white crown sparrows uh, chipping sparrows of course are around all the time but this I thought this was great to show that the the common area that they they frequent in the winter is well above where we are here in eastern Ontario and uh, that but uh, with the finch forecast we're suspecting that they'll be uh, here in great numbers and we should have some fun so start uh, practicing your ID skills and get ready for some red poles thanks and we'll talk to you soon